Hello lovely butterflies, it's Hans. Welcome to this journal on Monday week 135. I wanted to drop in to give you a quick word about today's spread because I made it for the week 11 Alad challenge. Now if you haven't heard about it, um, the Alad challenge is my a layer a day a spread a week challenge. So every day we take five minutes to put one layer in our journal which we leave to dry naturally so we don't waste any time heat setting anything and then we have the whole next day to think about what next layer it is we want to add so five minutes a day every day of the week by the end of the week you have a complete spread done and it would only have taken you a couple of days while you still had a lot of time to think about what you wanted to add for the next layer, which is what takes the most time, I think, when we are journaling. So that's what today's spread is all about. I've added every day the day that I'm working on. There is one day where I am cheating, I am using my heat gun. That is because I wanted to work with several colors and I didn't want to have any color contamination going on. So that's the only cheat day I had because I also had a bit more time that day. So. Uh, I hope you will join me in our challenge. You will find all the links you need in the description of the videos, all the product things in the description of the video. I hope you liked today's video and see you back next time. Enjoy! Let's do this. So day one, I'm working in my journal on Monday Art Journal and I'm cheating with two strips of paper because I actually wanted to stick pages together to make like um, folds which I couldn't do because I'm working, as you can see, where the binding of my journal is. And if I start sticking pages together here, I won't be able to redo the binding. So I'm cheating that way. And the first layer I'm applying is modeling paste over a piece of cambric because the theme of this week's Alad challenge is back to basics. So I'm using techniques that I used to use a long time ago. <laughs> so here I'm gluing down these strips of papers that I was talking about to create these um, and it's not folds, it's pockets that I meant to say. So my modeling paste isn't dry so I have to be careful not to put my arm or elbow or whatever in it. So I'm sticking everything down uh, with the help of some clips and then I'm just leaving everything to dry. I was looking if I could put some weight on uh, my journal but everything is so wonky that it won't work. So I'm just leaving it that way and I'll see tomorrow what it looks like. Oh and I want this to be a pocket so it cannot stick in the modeling paste. Day two I'm using my rock formation stencil and again modeling paste that I'm simply applying over the modeling paste from yesterday. So like I said in the introduction, you can find the link to the challenge in the description of the video and you can find the link to the blog post, you can find the link to the products that I used. I'm scraping away the modeling paste that went on the pocket and again, I'm making sure that my pocket still opens. And then on top of the pockets, I'm applying white crackle paint. Again, making sure that I don't cover up uh, the sewing so that I can rebind my journal when I feel like I need to do it. The good thing about working um, in the way we're doing for the Alad challenge is that crackle paint dries best if you leave it to dry naturally. So here, I don't even have to second guess if I should dry this or not. I'm just leaving it be. I will have perfect cracks when I get back to it tomorrow. Day three, it's time to add some color. And I'm adding fluid acrylics, which I will dilute with water. And on my journal, I'm also applying uh, a lot of water. That's why I'm placing some uh, masking tape on top of the sewing to avoid the color seeping through my whole journal.
as I have a lot of water on my journal and that will that could take the color all over the place I need to set this uh, before I can keep on working because as you can see I keep flipping my journal over and over and with all that water I could have a completely colored journal and that's not what I want to have The third color I'm going in with is the green because as to this week's theme is back to basics, I'm going back to my color combo that was my go-to for a very, very long time, a long, long time ago. <laughs> so today it does make me feel out of my comfort zone and on the other hand it does feel quite familiar. It's not something that I would do um, these days, but it it, yeah, it has something uh, kind of fun to just use those again. To accentuate some of the colors, I'm going back in this time with less water, more of the pure color. Just here and there some touches to have like this vibrant, more dramatic color, color going on. Just going back in with the heat gun one more time to make sure that no color will run where it shouldn't be running. So the next day when I come back to this, I have absolutely no clue what I want to do with it because these colors are so far away of what I would use today as color combo that I just feel completely out of my comfort zone. So I'm adding some distress ink on the edges and then some stamping using one of my rock and rust stamps and archival ink still don't know what to do with it so i'm just fixing up this pocket that won't um, stick down enough to be secure and still trying to figure out what i could do with this 
So this is me just buying time, actually. Then I decided to tone down a bit of that color, as that is what was bothering me. So I'm going in with Titan Buff Fluid Acrylic, and then with a baby wipe, just slightly bringing back the color that's underneath. But that is still not doing it for me. I, I'm still so unhappy with this color. <laughs> too much color, too wild, too not what I would do today. But I'm playing the game. So I'm adding some more stamping. Maybe this will take me to a next idea that I could apply. So next day, I had an idea. I'm going back in with rusted paper. These are leftovers from my rusting station uh, where rusted metals are left to dry. I will add the link to my rusting recipe as well in the description of the video. Um, but I decided to stick down some of that paper. And no cheating today, this time I'm leaving it to dry by itself. So that was a very, very quick layer today. Day six, everything is dry so I can take away the excess of the rusted paper. But I also want to bring back all the things that I did underneath. So I'm going in with sanding paper and because of the modeling paste that I have underneath, I can just scrape away parts of the rusted paper. And this was starting to make me happy, finally. It also gave me the idea of what I wanted to do next. I'm using one of my Creepers and Crawlers stamps with Memento ink. And I'm going to colorize this using Copic markers to make it work with the spread. So first I'm taking out a whole bunch of colors, not sure of which one I want to use. And then reminding myself of how uncomfortable that all that crazy color made me, I decided to keep it a bit toned down and to leave out the green while coloring. And that's it for today's layer. 
coming back to it the next day, last day, day seven, I'm going in with cambric, which was one of my basics and still is one of my basics. I like the fact that you can distress it like really, really roughly and it still keeps its um, shape. Again, you'll find the link to it in um, the description of the video. Just adding some layers of those and then of course another one of my basics, metal wire and I'm looking for a jar that I can use to shape the circle. And now I also know which words it is I want to add first. This one, which says urgent, which is one of my perfect word stamp set. And then this one, which I absolutely love. These are any mini tiny numbers. And they just go perfectly on the edge of that pocket. And then distressing the edge of my wording, just using the scissors. My butterfly needs some distress ink on the edges to take away all that white of the paper. And now I can start prepping the last one of my basics, which is of course a mini tiny red heart. Now this time I'm using one of my stamps to create it and this red chalky finish. Um, acrylic paint. So I'm just stamping a little red heart. I'm leaving it to dry by itself. Meanwhile, I'm sticking down the embellishments of my spread. And then I decided that my little word needed something more. So I'm going back in with another one of my Rock and Rust stamps and a very soft ink just to give it a little bit more of a grungy look to match the rest of the spread. Meanwhile, my little red heart is dry, so I can go in with the triple, triple thick glaze again from DecoArt. And that's one of my dogs <laughs> running into um, the stand of my camera. I cannot heat set this, even if I wanted to, because it would just make the glaze completely bubble. So again, I'm leaving it aside to dry. And meanwhile, I'm going to sew down the metallic circle. So yes, today's layer again is a little bit more than five minutes, but the layer from yesterday was way less than five minutes. So. Meanwhile, my little heart is dry, so I can just cut it out and I know you can hardly see what it is I, I'm doing, but I wanted to show you just how hard I can make it for myself sometimes to add that one little thing that I absolutely want to add to my spread. And voila, and now I can finally stick it down. 
All that I have left to do is to add the date and then I'm done. I hope you liked today's video. If so, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And see you back next time. Ta-da!